Hello there. Complaining is the act of expressing discontent or dissatisfaction. It's finding fault or negativity in something, and it's indicative of suffering. Some people on this earth seem to have a naturally positive attitude. For these people, the cup is always half full. But for some of us, our natural state is no longer positive. Instead, it is more naturally negative now. As a result, we walk the planet with an attitude of the glass is always half empty. Most of us who chronically complain grew up with adults who were either complainers themselves or who completely invalidated the negative. Obviously, complaint can be a learned behavior, but the pathology of this style of complaining doesn't go as deep. So instead, let's talk about those of us who had parents that invalidated our negative expression and even shamed us for it. When we express negative emotion or perspectives, they quickly turned it on us. They invalidated or shamed us. They did not make us believe it was okay to feel how we felt, see what we saw, or hear what we heard. They made us feel as if there was something wrong with us for feeling how we felt. Imagine that negative energy is like a poison. When we tried to release this poison as children, the people in our lives disapproved of it and tried to squelch it. On an energetic level, it's a bit like forcing someone to re-eat their own vomit. And we became more and more toxically negative internally as a result. Chronic complaint goes hand in hand with low self-esteem. In fact, you will not find someone who complains chronically that does not feel negatively about themselves. And it's easy to understand. After all, if we had parents that made us believe that there was something wrong or defective about us because of how we felt, then we start to believe that we're defective and that we're bad, that there is genuinely something wrong about us. So our egos became victim egos. They began to find fault in everything relentlessly and blame others so as to try to feel and prove that we are, in fact, good by contrast and comparison. After all, if what we feel is justified, nothing is wrong with us. We find fault in other things so that in contrast, we can be good. If we are chronic complainers, then we have two glaring unmet needs. The first is we need our pain to be felt, seen, heard, acknowledged, and validated. We feel alone with our pain. We desperately call out through our complaint to have someone see our pain. And the second unmet need is that we need to feel good about ourselves. We have to feel as if there is nothing wrong with us, as if we have value. Here's the thing. Most psychological and spiritual advice will tell you why you need to stop complaining, why it's so bad, and how you should just wipe your life clean of people who are chronic complainers because who needs the negativity? But this approach doesn't work, and here's why. If you approach your complaint as if complaining itself is wrong or bad or unacceptable, you reject that aspect of yourself or you reject that aspect of another person. You can't reject an aspect of yourself and be in alignment with self-love at the same time. Instead, you are feeding self-hate. Now what we just discovered is that self-hate, that feeling that there's something defective or wrong or bad or unacceptable about us, is the very fuel which feeds the fire of complaint. So all we're doing by rejecting complaint and by making ourselves stop complaining and getting rid of other people who do complain is we are fueling the fire of complaint. We are adding to the precondition necessary for people to complain and we won't be able to stop the behavior. I don't need to tell you why chronic complaining or negative focus is a detrimental thing. For the most part, it's obvious and self-explanatory, especially if you understand the law of attraction. But what we have to get is that complaint is the byproduct of low self-esteem. You cannot reject this aspect within yourself and try to get rid of it because it's bad without perpetuating self-hate. We further wound ourselves and other people with this approach. So what should we do if we notice ourselves chronically complaining? One, we have to love and validate the aspect of us that is complaining. We have to be willing to be unconditionally present with ourselves, to dive beneath the surface complaint to the part of us that is in fact hurting. This is what pain does, it calls for your attention. The moment you have a complaint, you have to acknowledge your pain, infuse this aspect of you with love. You can also ask yourself the following question, what really hurts me about this? You can ask this question over and over until you get to the core hurt beneath the complaint. It's a bit like finding a core belief. For example, say I had a complaint that the linens on the bed were not folded correctly. I would ask myself, what about this hurts me so bad? 
I might find that if the linens aren't folded correctly, then the other person doesn't obviously care very much about me. So then I ask the question again, what about this really hurts me? I might find that the answer is, if they don't really care about me, then I must be worth nothing to them. Now you can keep going with this questioning as far as you want to go. You can keep digging and digging and digging. But for the sake of your understanding, what I've just discovered is that the complaint I had about the linens was just a surface symptom of the fact that deep down, I feel worthless. It is the self that feels worthless within me, or feels like other people don't actually care about me at all, that needs unconditional presence. In other words, you need to be present with that core pain. To understand more about how to be present with and thus transform inner pain, watch my video on YouTube titled, How to Heal the Emotional Body. Two, behind complaint is the feeling that we are absolutely helpless. It's a state of disempowerment. If we're complaining, we're most likely complaining because we feel like we can't actually do anything to improve the way we feel or to improve the conditions. And who would blame us for thinking so? After all, we were raised by parents or people, yet again, who told us we were invalid for feeling the negative feeling that we felt, and thus there's nothing we can do to improve the scenario we find ourselves in. We were stuck. But what we have to admit to is that now we are not stuck. We need to get completely present to the aspect within us that feels helpless and is begging through our complaint to be rescued. Then we need to practice pivoting. Instead of focusing on what is happening that we do not like, we have to use the awareness of what is disliked to inspire us towards the opposite and then focus on and move towards what is wanted instead. This will create a feeling of empowerment. You are no longer stuck in the unwanted. You can use the unwanted to point you in the direction of and propel you towards what is wanted instead. Your complaints will tell you what is important to you. They will tell you what your priorities are and about what you need and want. You can even ask yourself when you are considering voicing a complaint or already have voiced a complaint, what am I wanting to get as a result of voicing this complaint? Three, we need to listen to and feel the feelings that are below the complaint before we voice the complaint. But once we have done that, we need to express the feelings that we found beneath that particular complaint. I want you to think about this a little bit like metabolizing your emotions. Emotions are a charged energy. They can feel highly electric. And when we take time to metabolize those feelings before we express them, we remove the charge from emotions. This is not the same thing as suppressing emotions. If all we do is merely take the action to force ourselves to stop complaining or stop expressing negative emotions, we're in the act of suppression, and in fact, we will cause ourselves to become more toxic. We've done to ourselves exactly what the caregivers in our early life have done to us. This is not the same thing. I want you to imagine that you're taking all of the energy of that rising of emotions, and you're basically riding it like a dragon, deep within the self instead of externally. You're essentially using the charge to propel your journey inwards and deeper to find what is below that charge or that surface complaint. So we need to do these previous two steps before we express our negative emotion. This way our expression will be genuine and about the vulnerability underneath the dissatisfaction. The frustrating paradox of feelings is that they contain valuable information because they point to something that is very important to us and self-expression is crucial. But on the other hand, expressing them without metabolizing them by using them to become more conscious rarely gets us the results we want because the electrical element to the emotional charge tends to hurt people and make them feel as if the emotion is a personal attack. In this way, our reactivity can become a meditation bell awakening us to an opportunity to become awakened. And it allows our expression to be much more authentic. Step four directly ask someone to see, feel, hear, acknowledge, and validate your pain. It might seem interesting to you, but a complaint is in fact a manipulation. Through our complaint, what we're hoping to get or manipulate the other person into is to actually become aware of our pain. We want it to be acknowledged. But instead of going through the back door to try to get them to do that, go through the front door and just literally say, Right now, I really need you to see my pain. I need you to feel me. Step five, address your self-esteem head on. 
Instead of letting your ego run the show as it is currently doing, by trying desperately to feel good about itself, by being right, by being justified, by being good, and by being superior. Right now, your ego is trying to feel a sense of its own value and goodness by making other things wrong, bad, inferior, and faulty. So first we have to admit to where we are, which is feeling really bad about ourselves, and then work on improving our self-esteem directly. Six, start a positive aspects journal and carry it with you wherever you go. If you are in the habit of chronically noticing things that are faulty or bad or defective or not okay or negative about your environment, then you're living in an absolute hell. And it's going to take some time because that's such an ingrained way of being to deliberately focus on the exact opposite of that particular vibration. So what I want you to do is to carry this journal around and to list anything that feels good, anything you appreciate, anything that is positive about whatever circumstance you may find yourself in. For those of us who have issues chronically complaining, one of the best tools to use is this positive aspect journal, but relative to things that we don't like. And I'm not trying to convince you to like something you don't like, but for example, if we hate waiting in line at the DMV, instead of chronically focusing negatively and instead of talking ourselves into actually liking being at the DMV, what we can do is an internal scavenger hunt for aspects about waiting in line at the DMV that might actually feel good or be positive. 7. Don't set the goal of never ever complaining again. This is a surefire way to completely fail at your attempt to not complain. Instead, I want you to select a temporary time period with which to practice the art of not complaining. But instead of merely taking that action step of not complaining, each time you feel a complaint surface, you're going to go through all of the steps which I've outlined previously in this particular video, and then you are going to express those deeper emotions beneath the complaint to someone. For example, decide to go just one day without complaining, where every time you are tempted to complain, you go through the six steps outlined previously instead. This shorter time period will allow you to concentrate more fully on your goal. The shortened time frame is manageable and experimental instead of punishing, and will create increased sensitivity. You can extend the time frame as your confidence with handling the emotional content below the complaint increases. If you have someone in your life who is a chronic complainer, nothing will ever help or assist the situation better than practicing the art of unconditional love towards them and by assisting them to meet those two unmet needs. What I suggest is that you re-watch this video, but this time with the focus of how could I lend my energy to assist this particular person in my life to find some resolution or some genuine presence for that aspect of themselves that is beneath the complaining, the aspect of them that is deeply suffering, in pain, and absolutely in need of my unconditional presence. Learn to see through and beyond the complaint itself to the vulnerability and the needs and wants and gold underneath. Complaint is nothing more than a symptom, but if you're somebody who experiences this particular symptom, the time has come to go beneath that symptom to find what is causing it to find the pain and the deep vulnerability that is asking you to be aware and present to it. You have absolutely every right to feel the way you feel. You're justified to be in the kind of pain you're in, and your complaints are probably accurate. But the question that we have to ask ourselves is, would we rather be justified, right, good, and superior, or happy? Have a good week.